right, so I'm Ryan Brown here with the Cinemad House, and I'm here with... Yes, that's me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. McCullough, I wanted to talk to you first about your appearance in Zombie. Uh, in 1979, we're approaching 45 years of it. What What's it been like for you, uh, getting to see all the fans of the movie? Uh, well, it is constantly amazing to me that a film that's been made all those years ago still has a fan base. Because when I made it, I thought it was something that was just going to disappear from the world sort of completely and never be seen again. And it's only because of its infamy rather than its sort of cinematic excellence, I think, that it's survived the first stage. And then after that, in my opinion, people just have, for whatever reason, an enormous affection for it. And they love it. They, you know, they're not put off by the violence, by the gore, by the horror of it. They just love it as a film. They think it looks great, sounds great. They find humor in it, which I never knew existed. Um, I say when I saw it in Edinburgh, heard it in, in Edinburgh, they laughed, they cheered, they clapped, and they joined in with the dialogue. And any film that can make an audience do that is, you know, is special in one way or another. All right, and so in the movie, there's very clearly a whole lot of in-depth and very gross practical effects for a lot of it. Do you think that would be anything that would be able to be achieved now, whether it's with VFX or uh, CGI or anything like that? Or do you think it was really a pra uh, product of its time? Well, it was a product of Lucio Fulci and, and the, you know, it, it, the, the Italian version of doing all these sort of slasher, gory sort of movies. Uh, I don't know what you're, what you're allowed to do. Now. I mean, you know, what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to do keeps sort of changing almost day by day. So I don't know, perhaps someone would take a risk and do it, but then you just face the sort of sensors and if the sensors don't like it, you know, it'll just be sort of cut out and removed from the movie. All right, and so what was it like getting to work with Mr. Fulci so close? Uh, now, you know, what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, he's an iconic director. Do you have like any special memories related to it or uh, anything like that? No, I have very little to do with him. He just knew that I was like Richard Johnson was a professional sort of British actor and a stage actor. He knew that I'd do whatever I was supposed to do. I'd turn up on time. I wouldn't be drunk. I wouldn't sort of throw fits and wobbly, although I did on one occasion. Um, so I just did my job, and I think that's more or less what he relied on. Uh, I met him just before the filming in London. We had a fairly desultory sort of conversation over dinner, for which I was two hours late, so perhaps that's the reason why. But they just, you know, because of the television series, they just wanted me to do the movie and they wanted me to say yes. So when I got out in Italy, he left Richard and me just more or less to do whatever you know, the script said we had to do. I don't remember ever getting any direction from him at all. But as I've sort of said several times, it's quite difficult to take seriously because he, he used to wear a rather silly hat when he was making the movie. He also smoked his pipe alive. I mean, the pipe was lit upside down, uh, and it, the, the tobacco sort of flaked down an awful lot of his sort of shirt and made him look a mess. And he and he looked rather like a, a British comedian called Benny Hill. So he was a sort of combination of Benny Hill and Jacques Tati. And I don't know whether you saw, I wrote an article for Fangoria, and uh, it was reproduced in uh, The Last Drive-In in April. Of, of, I somehow rather managed to take pictures of him. Um, managing to steer a little dinghy into a yacht which had been hired, uh, him looking very, very guilty because it was his fault, and then him also advancing on the rest of the crew to blame them as if they it was their fault that it had actually happened. So and, um, he sort of sadly sort of died um, sort of prematurely, and I'm quite sure he would, have, he would have filled these places over and over again all over the world. Um, so it's sad that he's gone, but so to say, working with him, I was happy to do it, but I couldn't take him seriously as a person, and I should have really, I mean, you can do it nowadays on Wikipedia, but I should have looked him up to see what he'd done, because he had, you know, he'd done so many films and had had so much success before he got stuck into doing sort of zombies and other movies of that genre. All right, and so as to not pigeonhole you, I also wanted to ask about some of your other projects that you've done. I mean, you've been in Doctor Who. I, that's probably going to be the one that a whole lot of people here are uh, 
coming to get you to sign for that and zombie uh, do you have any other special pro uh, works that you've done that really stuck out to you or any of your favorites well i got the films initially because i did a tv series called survivors uh, and i played the lead in that two and a half series i wrote three of the scripts i wrote some of the music that's in it as well and that other than an episode of cold it's which i don't think we've seen in the states i'm not too sure it was a british american co-production but it seemed to just die a death. Uh, that was the best part I ever had on TV. And then the, the sadness to me is, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i grateful for all the success of Zombies and Zombie Holocaust and all the rest of it, but it's my theatre work, I think, that I'm most proud of. Um, and, it, you know, 300 people up to 1,000 people watch you do a stage show, whereas millions of people all over the world have seen these movies. And, and especially zombie, um, and this has just been a fantastic success all over the world. All right, so, how did you get into acting in the first place? Like, what was, was your parents kind of in the scene in the first place, or were you more of just did it in school and it carried over? Yeah, my my mother's first job was playing the piano in a cinema just as sound came in. So, although she got the job to play the piano, if the projection broke down, it never broke down, so she never played the piano. But that's that's the closest I. I my family got to the theatre. Uh, my mother and my brother both worked at the BBC, but my mom was in catering. My brother was in the music department, sending off music. I just, someone said to me when I was about 14 that they thought I could do pretty well as an actor. So I just thought that sounds like a good idea. So I finished schooling. I had to do my army service. Uh, I then went to Oxford for three years. And all that time, I just thought I'm going to be an actor. And it just sort of happened. I was in the right, I was the right place, the right place, at the right time. And I started at the top uh, with the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I very, very quickly worked my way to the bottom. All right. So, uh, what's been your favorite part of Nightmare Weekend so far? Getting to see Virginia. Uh, the, that yes. Uh, well, I decided to walk from my hotel to various museums. Um, which were a little bit further away than I suspected they were going to be. So I was limping heavily when I got there and limping even more heavily by the time I got back. Um, I mean, the problem, you know, when you go to any of these conventions, you don't, you don't really see anything. You see the, uh, the airport, the hotel, the convention center, and that's it. And although I have tried, I mean, I have seen too little of Richmond. Uh, although I have to say that both the museums that I visited were first class. The history one fascinating and the fine arts one, I mean, an absolutely brilliant place. And a brilliant building as well, an astonishing building. All right, and so my last question for you is, what's some general life advice, your best piece of advice you can give to anyone at home? To do what? Cooking? Uh, cooking, how to live their life, what you think would be like the best way to motivate anyone going forward? Just do the best you can, keep smiling. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Still smiling, thank you. Thank you.